seminar. My topic is coagulation of concentrated milk. Introduction Milk is a nutrient-rich liquid food produced in the mammary glands of mammals. It is the primary source of nutrition for infant mammals including humans who are breastfed before they are able to digest other types of food. Early lactation milk contains colostrum which carries the mother's antibodies to its young and can reduce the risk of many diseases. It contains many other nutrients including protein and lactose. Interspecies consumption of milk is not uncommon particularly among humans, many of whom consume the milk of other mammals. Concentrated Milk Many of us use concentrated milk every day although we may refer to it using names like powdered milk or condensed milk. These are some examples of concentrated milk. Concentrated milk is simply milk that has moisture removed. Concentrated milk contains the same vitamins and minerals as fresh milk. Producers take milk solids and increase them to 28% by gently evaporating water or 20% in the case of skim evaporated milk. After the milk is concentrated, the milk is then canned and sterilized to destroy bacteria and enzymes to increase shelf life. This process also makes lactose, the sugar in milk, caramelize, which provides a unique color and flavor. Condensed milk benefits come from its versatility as many people use it instead of cream. Milk is concentrated to remove up to 75% of the water. By removing the water weight, the milk concentrate can be transported and stored using less energy and at lower cost. The milk concentrate can be rehydrated before distribution to stores or dispensed with a bag in box systems to deliver a fresh milk product directly to the consumer. Alternatively, the milk concentrate can be used as a functional food with significant savings from processing efficiency improvements. Concentrated milk is produced by partial removal of water from fresh milk for direct sale to the consumer, which can be used as food ingredients for providing a source of milk solids in manufacturing of a variety of other products. The removal of water from milk gives an advantage in reducing storage and transport cost, ease or convenience in use and increased shelf life. Concentrated milk is further reconstituted by the consumer with water to give a similar composition of fresh milk. It is generally produced as a 3 to 1 concentrate containing approximately 10 to 12 percentage milk fat and 36 percentage total milk solids. Milk protein concentrate that is MPC is any type of concentrated milk product that contains 40 to 90 percentage milk protein. The United States officially defines MPC as any complete milk protein that is casein plus lactalbumin concentrate that is 40 percentage or more protein by weight. In addition to ultra filtered milk products, the MPC classification includes concentrates made through other processes such as blending non-fat dry milk with highly concentrated protein such as casein. To make milk protein concentrate, whole milk is first separated into cream and skim milk. The skim milk is then fractionated using ultra filtration to make a skim concentrate that is lactose reduced. This process separates milk components according to their molecular size. Milk then passes through a membrane that allows some of the lactose, minerals and water to cross through. The casein and whey proteins, however, will not pass through the membrane due to their large molecular size. The protein, lactose and minerals that do not go, go through the membrane are then spray dried. Spray drying and evaporation further concentrate the remaining materials to form a powder. Depending on the purpose of the final product, different heat treatments can be used to process ultra-filtered or blended varieties of MPC. An MPC product processed with a low heat will maintain higher nutritional value. Concentrated milk products are valued for the unique taste and for the long shelf life qualities. When it comes to evaporated milk for instance, it is made by heating raw milk in a partial vacuum so that the boiling point is raised to 43 to 60 degrees Celsius or 110 to 140 degree Fahrenheat until it has lost about half its water. 
The resulting creamy, mildly caramel flavored liquid is then homogenized and then canned and sterilized. For the other well known concentrated milk, sweetened condensed milk, the initial evaporation is the same as for evaporated milk. After that, sugar is added until it reaches a concentration of about 55%. At this concentration, microbes cannot grow, so the process of sterilization is redundant. However, because of the high concentration of sugars, the milk's lactose begins to crystallize. This is prevented by seeding. The milk with the performed lactose crystals to encourage controlled crystallization to keep the crystals small and undetectably by the tongue. Condensed milk has a lighter color and a milder flavor than evaporated milk and is of the consistency of a thick syrup. Lastly, when making powdered milk, there are several processes and differing methods used. One such method involves first passing the milk into an evaporator where about one third of water content is removed. This is done in a partial vacuum that allows for a lower boiling point such as 55, 57 degrees Celsius or 134.6 degree Fahrenheit. This is important because it allows the milk to evaporate at a lower enough temperature so it does not alter the biochemical makeup of the original milk. Water is removed until the solids increases from the natural 12% 12, 12 if one includes the butter fat to about 50%. During this process, the milk undergoes pasteurization at temperatures of about 79 degree Celsius or 174.2 degree Fahrenheit or so for 20 seconds before it is quickly cooled. Again, this has, uh, this has the added benefit of killing of the microbes without destroying the integrity of the milk. In making powder, the milk then goes from the evaporator to the separator where the cream butter flat is removed. The butter fat is placed in a separate storage tank to be used later. The skim milk now moves on to tanks to be standardized. In commercial plants, this means adjusting the skimmed evaporating milk by putting back the solids and some of the fat until it meets the standard requirements of the customer. This also ensures consistency of the final product from batch to batch. Milk solids including butter fat are standardized at around 8.8% solids and 3.4% butter fat that comes to 12.2% total solids. At this point, the remaining evaporated and condensed milk is turned into powdered milk. Then coagulation. Coagulation is essentially the formation of a gel by destabilizing the casein micelles, causing them to aggregate and form a network which partially immobilizes the water and traps the fat globules in the newly formed matrix. Milk is slightly acidic. When the pH is lowered even more by the addition of another acidic ingredient, the protein molecules stop repelling each other. This allows them to stick together or coagulate into the clumps. Coagulation of milk Milk is an emulsion with fat particles, that is globules, dispersed in an aqueous, that is watery environment. The fat globules do not coalesce and form a separate layer, oil of or churn, because they are protected by a membrane, layer which keeps the fat particles separate from the water phase. The principal group of milk proteins, the caseins, are not soluble in water and exist in milk as small particles less than 300 nanometer celled called micelles. We can now define the following terms. The first term is milk, a dispersion of milk fat globules fa uh, and ca uh, casein micelles in a continuous phase of water, sugar, whey proteins and minerals. The second term is milk plasma. What is left after you separate the flat globules equivalent to skim milk for practical purposes. Third term is milk serum. What is left after you take away both fat globules and casein micelles equivalent to cheese whey for most practical purposes. Then last term is milk permeate. What is left after you take away uh, fat globules, casein micelles and whey proteins. Coagulation is what happens when the casein micelles stick together. 
because casein particles are hydrophobic their natural tendency is to aggregate clump together in normal milk aggregation is prevented by two factors if one of these factor is eliminated the micelles will aggregate and form a gel something like jello the first stabilizing factor is a hairy layer of surface active protein called kappa casein on the surface of the micelle this layer helps prevent the micelles from getting close enough to stick together the second factor is a negative charge on the micelles at the ph of milk the micelles are negatively charged so they repel each other so basically there are two ways to coagulate the milk one is to remove the hairy layer from the micelles that's called enzymatic coagulation the other is to neutralize the negative charge on the micelle that can be accomplished by acidification or a combination of high temperature and acidification then first one is enzymatic coagulation of milk the three stages of enzymatic coagulation are primary stage secondary stage and tertiary third stage first one primary stage in the first stage the enzyme rennet cuts off a specific fragment of one of the caseins namely k casein at the natural ph of milk about 80 percentage of casein must be cleaved to permit aggregation of the micelles to proceed secondary stage the next stage is the physical process of aggregation of casein particles to form a gel after losing its water soluble tail casein can no longer keep the casein particles separated so they begin to form chains and clusters the clusters continue to grow until they form a continuous three dimensional network which traps water inside and forms a gel something like jello then the in the third stage refers to an ongoing development of the gel network for some cheese the gel is cut as soon as it is form enough to do so for others like soft ripened cheese cutting is delayed while the gel continues to become firmer effects of processing parameters on enzymic coagulation because rennet coagulation takes place in stages it is necessary to understand the effect of processing on each stage we will focus mainly on only the first and second stages effect of ph lower ph increases enzyme activity and neutralizes charge repulsion between micelles therefore both primary and secondary stages of coagulation proceed more quickly at lower ph then effect of calcium calcium is not required for the primary stage but it is essential to aggregate of the casein micelles at low levels of calcium the primary phase goes to completion subsequently instantaneous coagulation can be induced by adding sufficient calcium chloride then effect of temperature the optimum coagulation temperature for most cheese is 30 to 32 degree celsius the exception is swiss which is set at 37 degree celsius at a temperature less than 30 degree celsius the gel is weak and difficult to cut without excessively yield loss due to fines at a temperature less than 20 degree celsius coagulation does not occur but the primary stage goes to completion and the milk will then coagulate quickly when warmed effect of heat treatment mild heat treatment such as pasteurization decreases the rate of the secondary stage during heat treatment calcium and phosphate move from soluble to colloidal or insoluble form so there is less calcium available to assist with the coagulation this effect is reversed by cold storage or the addition of calcium chloride heat treatment is in excess of pasteurization results in increased clotting time and a weak gel high heat treatment causes absorption of whey proteins onto the casein particles the casein particles are then unable to form a strong gel effect of homogenization the following effects occur if the cheese milk is homogenized in its entirety homogenization primarily affects the secondary phase of aggregation some cheese quality effects are also noted reduced aggregation of casein particles decreased senescence finer gel network due to smaller fat globules improved texture of soft cheese fat recovery is increased 
hard cheese becomes rubbery makes cheese whiter because the yellow fat is masked by the artificial protein membrane on the homogenized fat globules coagulating enzymes the traditional enzyme is rennet chymos chymosine which is derived from the abomasum of the milk fed calf the practice of cheese making probably began when somebody discovered that milk stored in bags made from calf stomach formed a sweet curd other proteases which have been used for cheese making include pepsin from the pig cow and chicken microbial proteases and synthetic chymosin by recombinant dna techniques using strains of escherichia coli or claveromyces lactis or aspergillus niger as host organism is now available the transferred genetic material exists in the host cell in the form of plasmid and is used as a template for the production of an enzyme identical to chymosin requirements of suitable coagulating enzymes suitable ratio of clotting to proteolytic activity c by p this ratio is dependent on the specificity of the enzyme for the uh, phenol 105 to um, methanol 106 bond of casein most rennet substitutes are more proteolytic than rennet and cause diminished yield of casein and fat and bitterness during ripening proteolytic specificity structure and flavor of rife, ripened cheese depends on the type of proteolysis caused by the coagulant during cheese make cheese curing the exception is in cheese such as swiss or parmesan where most of the rennet activity is destroyed by the high cooking temperature during ripening chymosin breaks down uh, one of the casein namely s1 casein uh, much more than other caseins high ph optimum Rennet activity is stable and able to coagulate milk at the normal pH of milk although its activity increases with decreasing pH. Most pepsins and microbial proteases are denatured at the pH of milk which has been a major difficulty in developing rennet substitutes. Denaturation temperature is important for two reasons that are ripening due to coagulating enzyme is not desirable in cooked cheese such as Swiss and Italian types. Rennet is eliminated during the high temperature cook in these cheeses but microbial coagulants are not. Second one is the coagulant must be eliminated by pasteurization to prevent proteolysis in products made from whey. Some microbial rennets survive pasteurization. Distribution between curd and whey. Only Zero uh, to fifteen percentage of rennet remains in the curd, but small amounts of residual rennet are significant to ripening of aged cheese. The most important factor which determine rennet retention are cooking treatments. As noted above, rennet does not survive in high temperature cooked cheese varieties. In uh, in low cooked cheese such as cheddar, variations in cooking temperature and time influence rennet activity during aging. The pH at draining. Rennet is more soluble at low pH and therefore the amount retained in curd increase with decreasing pH at draining. Retention of microbial rennets in the curd is independent of pH at draining. Changing rennet sources may also influence rennet retention and cheese ripening. Different rennets with the same coagulating properties may have different thermal tolerances and different proteolytic characteristics. Standard and consistent activity. Single strength rennet is standardized so that 200 ml coagulates 1000 uh, kg of milk in 30 to 40 minutes. Typical commercial rennet preparation are about 50% chymosin and 50% bovin pepsin. So there is much opportunity for variation. Commercial calf rennet preparation are about 94 to 96% chymosin. Using recombinant rennet, it should be possible to produce commercial rennet preparations which are more consistent with respect to all of the properties listed above including proteolytic specificity and heat tolerance. Then acid coagulation of milk. Acid milk gels can be formed by lactic bacteria or the use of acidifying agents such as gluconodelta lactone GDL is slowly hydrolyzed to gluconic acid in the presence of water. 
Acid coagulation is used in the production of cottage cheese, baker's cheese and quark as well as other fermented milk products such as yogurt, commercial buttermilk, kefir etc. In the case of cottage cheese and quark, a small amount of chymosin may be used to make the curd more elastic and less subject to breakage. Then heat acid coagulation. This process permits recovery of caseins and whey proteins in a single step. The basic principle is that whey proteins which are normally acid stable become sensitive to acid coagulation after heat treatment. This principle is exploited in the manufacture of ricotta cheese, paneer and chana and the manufacture of co-precipitated milk protein concentrates. The basic process for heat acid coagulation is heat milk or milk whey blended to at least 80 degrees Celsius for at least 5 minutes to completely denature the whey proteins and encourage association of whey proteins with casein micelles. Continue heating and acidify slowly with gentle agitation. The caseins and whey proteins will coagulate together and form either sinking or floating curds. Thank you.